Hey y'all, new day, new verses, new chapter. Let's dig in from chapter 15, verses 1 through 6. Here we go. Those of us who are strong and able in the faith need to step in and lend a hand to those who falter, and not just do what is most convenient to us. Strength is for service, not status. Each one of us needs to look after the other, uh, after the good of the people around us, asking ourselves, how can I help? That's exactly what Jesus did. He didn't make it easy for himself by avoiding people's troubles, but waded right in and helped out. I took on the troubles of the troubled is the way scripture puts it. Even if it was written in scripture long ago, you can be sure it's written for us. God wants the combination of his steady, consistent, calming, and warm personal counsel in scripture to become to characterize us, keeping us alert for whatever he will do next. May our dependability, steady, and warmly personality, uh, personal God develop maturity in you so that you can get along with each other as well as Jesus gets along with us all. Then we'll be a choir, not our voices only, but our very lives singing in harmony in a stunning anthem to God, to the God and the Father of our Master Jesus. You know, I really enjoy this verse, and I think God had me group them together because it's the idea of helping out, to take on those troubles, to lean into each other, to help out. You know, the strong protect the weak. If you've got it in you, use it. And the how can I help? Sometimes the how can I help can be as simple as butting out and letting people work it out. Being there. Letting our lives be ones that reflect who he is. That our relationship with him does turn our lives to match those characters. The steady, constant, calming, warm, personal counsel, the very nature of who God is, that kind of love, reflected on our own lives. So that when we are in these interaction places, we can help others out. We can lift each other up. Seeing how we can help them, being observant. And it's not just a matter of saying, okay, well, how can I help you? 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 It means being observant enough being thoughtful enough, being full of care enough to recognize what a person may need. You know, there's a, the moment you find yourself careful is the, mind you, is the moment you find yourself cared for. Well, I don't think it's a pins and needles thing. I think it's an observance thing. I think it is taking a moment to look at the lives around us, to look at the people around us, and embrace the, who they are. Not the situations they're in, but the people they are. You know, I think it's fitting that I'm in here doing this recording in a parking structure. It's for a reason. And I think it's because the idea of strength. If you have the strength to hold someone up, but you let them falter, well, especially if it's somebody who God put on your heart to be... God isn't going to call us to be, you know, super nanny for planet Earth. It's not our calling. But loving others? Definitely. Being a strong foundation to others is only possible because of our strong foundation in Him. And I think in a lot of ways that the helping out, the digging and doing what Jesus did of I took on the troubles of the troubled, he cared enough. Sometimes a lot of people, when they're in the middle of a dark place, just need to know that there is light. And that can help a great deal. Just having a moment of hope. Having a moment of realization that we're not in this alone. We are in this together. All of us, able to lift each other up. Able to praise God that our very lives become a stunning anthem of harmony to God because he's making us like him. It's a gift. A gift we can share with others. Now, how can I help can be as simple as taking care of something that somebody might need. And just, huh. Well, they needed being done, so I did it. Well, were you doing it for accolades or were you doing it because it was the right thing to do? Well, the right thing to do. You know, and, and this may be a, a slight, you know, raw moment here. 
but I personally can't stand the concept of just doing it for the accolades. You know, oh, I, I have strength for status. No, you don't. If you have strength, if you have that kind of ability to stand strong, it is not for status. No human being is another above another. The moment we start pretending otherwise, no. There's only one, one human being ever on planet Earth who could actually claim that. Jesus, the Messiah. Yehoshua, Yeshua. The only one who can claim to be better than. And he takes that status and becomes a servant. And if the Son of God, the Word of God made flesh, can say, well, yeah, I have the status, but so? You guys need a hand, so let me come give you a hand. Well, that's suddenly a different type of living entirely. That's not a, a code of night chivalry or, or rules and rote regulations to jump up and down to. It's a calling to live a life different, to live it his way, to dig into the word, to let him shape us. Because if we look at ourselves, we look at others, and the first thought isn't how can I help, we got work to do. And if the first thought is, how can I get something out of this? We got work to do. And if the first thought is anything other than, how can I show, God, uh, show God's love for others, the same love he's shown me, even if it's a subconscious thought, then we need work. And that's okay. Because the very nature of that work is the relationship. Letting him make us more mature so that we're not feeding on milk, but getting into the meat and potatoes, able to fill others up by offering them a bit. Now in Hebrews, it's the comment of, you know, you all know this and you should be teaching others by now. Well, it's not a vocation. It's, it's not a, I have enough letters behind my name to say I can do it. No, go do. Live a life that offers love, because i got to tell you, not everybody has to be somebody who sits in a nice pointy building. You can spread the word of God, share his love, share his grace, share his mercy. Have your love become part of that harmony by digging in with him. God will put us where he wants us. He will open the doors that he wants open and knows he needs open and shut the ones that need to be shut and thank him for it. Because there are some doors that we just walk headlong into and we're like, it'll be far. Because we need to think. More than that, we need to be full of care. Consistent in character and wise enough to say, maybe I don't have the answer here. But God does. Our lives are a blessing. Every moment even the difficult things can become a place of blessing. Because <laughs> shit moments make amazing fertilizer. So let him grow the seed in it. Not praising him because of a crappy day, praising him because he's in control of our lives and that he will work a crappy day into his glory. That's the kind of trust we're talking about here. That's the kind of relationship we're talking about here. Not praising for the bad, but praising God that he is. The bad is just merely there. Sky blue, water wet, world not always nice. Fair, kind, decent, generous, or any of those other things that Christ is. Hence the going back to this. Our lives being part of that beautiful harmony. And that's what I hope we would live for that the dependable, steady, warm, personal maturity that God has would be in us. So that when we hit tilt, we can throw up our hands and go, but my God is greater. When we hit, ah, we can embrace the fact that Lamentations is a book in the Bible. You'll hear the ug, and we can move forward. That's the kind of relationship I'm talking about. 
one that doesn't just redefine how we interact with the world, it redefines us. Not getting rid of us and making us a Borg clone, but refining us. The iron sharpening iron. The fire true proving the gold pure. That's the kind of life we're aiming for here. Stone him don't run from the flame, embrace it. Because there are four men in the fire. I look forward to seeing you all later. <laughs> Sorry. Lord help his vehicle. I look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow so we can dig into verses 7 through 13. And remember, you are loved. You can make it. And as you trust in him, he will shape us. It's what he does. It's the very nature of a relationship. If you don't believe me, try it and find out. And if you want a so-so analog before I wrap up, when in any relationship, we tend to take on the characteristics of the ones we're in one with. Let us take on the characteristics of God. Because they're right there. Develop maturity, steadiness, warmth, living in harmony with Him. Try it. Cry out to Him and thank Him that He's Him. Thank Him that He is God. God of the valley and God of the mountain. Use your gifts, lift others up. Because we have strength and we can lend it to each other. I hope we do. I will see you guys tomorrow for 7 through 13. God bless. May his favor be upon you. And don't give up hope.